with Jeannie's designs. And I'm getting ready to do a new pattern for me. And the beautiful thing about this pattern is it's free. It's the Ethel Tote Bag by Swoon. So Swoon Patterns, and this was copyrighted in 2016. So it's been around for a while. I've never made it. But it's a very, I don't know what she says. She doesn't say here if it's a beginner, but my guess is it's a beginner pattern. We'll find out. I've never made it. Um, but I wanted to pr uh, publicly thank BJ. She's a part of my, I met her at uh, Gardner Sewing Room. And, um, which was really fun to meet her. And she is part of my, um, Facebook group. And she posted one of these bags that she'd made. And it's red with animal print. It is so beautiful. BJ, you yeah, did yourself. Now, this one's not going to be nearly as pretty. I'm using some scraps up. So, um, but it's going to be cute. So, thanks for watching. And I'm going to have a little sip of coffee. Let's just quickly go over the pattern pieces. Um, and I don't, I think I, oh, here they are. So this is the um, side panels. There are two exterior side panels. So I'm making it in black. I had some scraps of black, believe it or not. And then I have Lux Fuse. Um, interfacing on the back of all my exterior pieces. And then this is what I'm using for the lining. You've seen this before in the festival uh, hip bag, but I had just enough to do the lining for this and I thought, let's use that. So those are the four side panels, two exterior and two lining. This is the bottom panel and I have a piece of Lux Fuse and then a piece of Decaville Heavy on the bottom and then a piece of the purple and black now interfacing because that's canvas waterproof canvas and then for the main panels i have two linings and it's a pretty good size bag so two linings out of that and then two exterior out of the black and it also has Lux Fuse and I just put it in my seam allowance I don't think I'll have a problem with it but yeah we'll see and then I am doing one shoulder handle rather than two um, handbag handles so I'm doing one it's not really a crossbody but it'll be plenty big for a nice shoulder handle and then for the outside, there is an outside pocket. So this is what I'm using for the outside pocket. Just a pop of color on one side. This is the uh, Saffrano, I believe, from Love, Indo Love Creations. Um, and again, I had just a little bit of one roll, so I wanted to use that. And then for my lining on my... Um, pockets I have been using this um, lightweight waterproof canvas this is also happens to be from under love creation so again I'm trying to use all my scraps up and that's what we're gonna do today I love it now the pattern because the pattern calls for um, two handles I am I cut two um, strap connectors. I'm trying to decide if I want to put those on with the one handle or just leave it connected to the bag. I'm using Thor today, so I won't have any trouble. So I, I haven't decided that yet for sure. So as you can tell, um, there's no hardware per the pattern. Although I am going to put a magnetic snap in there. Um, and I'll just use a silver magnetic snap, or maybe I'll use a, maybe I'll use a, um, gun metal. I think I'll use a gun metal magnetic snap. So, all right. The Ethel tote bag by Swoon. Thank you, BJ. I'm pretty excited about using it. I'm using, um, Tex 45 or maybe it's Tex 70. 
and a number 18 gauge needle, and I'm using my old Thor today. He's not old, he's brand new, but I love him. All right, let's get going. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is my handle. And I just divided, it. it's a four inch piece, and I just divided it down the middle. And um, I'm gonna put my light here, so maybe you can see. And I'm just folding it against itself. This is pretty lightweight vinyl. So I'm gonna have to get myself in the, in the camera. Hold on. Let me see if that's better. So I can see what I'm doing. Um So that's another reason I use Lux Fuse on the outside black pieces. It's this is very lightweight vinyl, very much considered, I think, an accessory weight. All right, so the next step is to, we created our um, handle, and I made this 36 inches long. I'm going to see how it looks when I get it on the bag. It may be a little too long, so I may adjust it. But you saw me in the middle of sewing that put down my seam guide. I forget to use that all the time. So these are the two slip pockets. This is the outside slip pocket with the, the Safino on the outside and the lining on the inside, just right sides together. The other thing I was gonna mention is my husband um, did uh, sanded my table. So it's much better. He even sanded this one so there's no sharp edges down here. It's a beautiful thing. All right, now let me look at the pattern because I need to know what her seam allowance is. Yeah, okay. So we're just going to sew this together at the seam allowance in the pattern. And hold your threads. Actually, really bugs me. I'm gonna have to mess with that. The funny thing is, yeah, that's not gonna work there. Hold. I'll have to figure that out. Um, let me just move it up. There we go. That's better. All right, now we're going to turn these wrong sides together and top stitch. Fun. This is a great easy pattern. Um, 
and inexpensive because it doesn't take tons of fabric and there's basically no hardware unless you choose to add a snap or a zipper or anything. I considered adding a zipper on the inside, but I thought, you know, the slip pocket on the inside is fine. And if you're using cotton, you could obviously go and sew this, but I have vinyl, so there's no ironing it. I think I said sew it. I mean ironing it. Okay. So let's just top stitch that. and see what their thoughts are on creating a um, needle positioner. They may already have it in the works for all I know. Now there's a little, when it got started, you know, that's one thing about Thor, it, and it really prefers um, heavy fabrics. So I'm just going to the back and I'm pulling that through. So it's not on the outside. Yep. So there was a little loop there. Not a big deal. All right, there's our outside pocket. Now, it'll be interesting to see how this goes because this is pretty lightweight. We'll see. Oh, I didn't have my hand. since I didn't hold my threads. And actually, he did pretty good on this lightweight fabric. I don't know. It's kind of weird. All right, let's turn this. I am going to go iron this. So I'll be right back. All right. I ironed it, and now I'm just going to top stitch. on this lightweight waterproof canvas, so who knows? All right, so now I have both my slip pockets. So I'm gonna get some tags and we'll put those on. All right, so I'm gonna put my silver name tag on the pocket here. And uh, the it's a beautiful thing on the other side the black i think it'll stand out a little bit better so i'm just going through the outside piece not the lining just got to be careful these exacto knives are very very sharp okay let's put this on i don't know what you can see i don't have as much room over here at thor that's one reason I probably navigate to uh, my uh, fabricator because there's a lot more room over there. It's all right. I am not complaining one bit. All right, gonna 
be just a tiny bit of noise with my little handy dandy. People often ask me where I get this, got this hammer. I've had this thing. I bet I've had it for 30 years. You can tell it's kind of all scratched up. And on the inside, it turns into a screwdriver. It's got little screwdriver attachments. I never use them. I don't know what I did with them. They may, they're in there, but anyway, it turns into a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think they're down here. Yeah, they're there. Turns into a screwdriver, and the this is the Phillips, and the other one's inside. <laughs> Never used it for that, but. I think I have occasionally in the past, but not recently. All right, let's put this little cover over that so it doesn't um, wear at our lining. So I'm just using little pieces of Lux Fuse that were left over from cutting. You know, interfacing is expensive, no matter what it is. So. I always use scraps. So there's my tag, and there it is on the back. Okay, now that's the two pockets. Let me get the um, back so I can put, it's a beautiful thing. All right, I didn't record that, but I sewed my interior at the seam allowance in the pattern on both sides, so now we have one big piece. Love it. So now let's do the exterior, same scenario. And I'm using my seam guide. It's beautiful thing. So now my guess is we're gonna top stitch both of those. If you see somebody walking around outside, that's my husband. Hold. All right, we are gonna top stitch quarter of an inch or an eighth, whatever you can do. Inside and the uh, exterior, and both of those seam allowances are going towards the bottom. Interior. Let's do the same on the exterior, except I can't iron it, so I'm just going to hold it. Clean that up. 
Hold, please. All right, here we go. I didn't hold my threads tight enough. Let's, I've got, I'm learning, I'm still learning that, believe it or not. It's a long-term habit that you have to develop. So, and obviously, I have not quite gotten there yet, and that's okay. I'll get there. I bet BJ made hers on her. She got a Thor. She had a new Thor. I bet she made this on Thor. BJ, did you make it on Thor? Love it. Okay, next step, hold on. All right, so now we're ready to put our gusset on. Mark all your centers. Pretty important. I even marked the top. I don't know that I'm going to need that, um, but just in case. So... I'm starting on this one with the um, pocket. I pin the bottom or I clip the bottom. Then I'm gonna bring this top up and see how we do. I haven't made it before, so I don't know how well it fits, whether we'll have to clip or not. I'm thinking just as I'm feeling it, we're gonna have to clip. That's all right. Okay, let's do the other side and then we'll clip. It was chilly this morning, so I put a long sleeve shirt on, but in here with the sun and all these lights, I'm getting kind of hot. I'm gonna have to turn my fan on. All right, let's do the clipping on our gusset. You have a generous seam allowance, so I'm just clipping about a little less than a quarter of an inch. Let's see how it's going to do. Perfect. That's perfect. Oh, okay, that fits beautifully with a little bit of clipping. Love it. Okay, let's clip the other side. And I know I've said this before in some of my videos, but when you're clipping, the rule of thumb is clip the straight piece. So our gusset is almost always the straight piece, and that's the piece that you're, you want to clip. It's, I don't remember, honestly, where I heard that, but it's brilliant. All right, so let's put this together at the seam allowance in the pattern. I am going to run out of a bobbin at some point. I just know it. Mark is my half. Yeah. They're not marked. It's okay. I 
am not leaving the turning tool in this side with the pocket. I'm going to leave it in the other side. This is the lining, it's not that important, as important. other lining piece and we'll do the same thing but this one will leave um, a pretty generous hole in the bottom to turn none of this material is going to be bad to turn so I'm really not too worried about it but we'll mark our turning we'll mark our hole I should say So I'll do this on the fast forward, since this is a repeat, except for the hole in the bottom. All right, so I'm going to start. Uh, I completed the inside, and I did trim the seam allowances to about um, half of what they were. And she does talk about making the um, bottom portion of the bag and the sides, not the top, but the sides, um, a bigger seam allowance. So you can do that. I did a little bit. I didn't do the fold that she talks about in the pattern, just FYI. And now I'm just clipping my outside pieces. And we are going to have to trim these or snip these as well. So I'm starting with the one um, that has the pocket on the front. And I decided not to put a magnetic snap. This is a pretty narrow bag on top and the pattern doesn't call for it and I'm trying to honor the pattern and I just personally I agree with her it doesn't really need it but you certainly could add one. All right let's clip this a little. It's a pretty wide bag actually. I mean, on the bottom and guess it. I do like that. And I don't know if I've ever really talked about this, but when depending on your seam allowance is how deep your snips are. I typically put my snips a three eighths to a half inch away and a little less than half of the seam allowance. 
You don't want to risk any of that coming apart. So you want to stay well outside your seam allowance when you do your snips. Just a rule of thumb that I go by. It may or may not be right. I don't know. Okay. All right, let's do this. Beautiful. All right, let's add the other side.
All right, I did leave my strap uh, 36 inches long. And I've got it clipped in the center on the sides, um, on both sides. So, and I took my um, arm off. So I can do the outside. It's a beautiful thing. This is going to be easier to do from this way. Actually. do I don't often do this but I'm gonna stitch open just across the top my seams on the side I don't do that very often but and it's probably a, a little overkill but I'm doing it I'll show you what I mean I'm stitching those sides open. I should have started over here for this, but that's okay. Yeah, I like it. Whoops. I got too much stuff here. I'm going to have to move my clips. Ah, that's better. Grab the threads. And obviously you're uh, doing that way out of the seam allowance. So you're not getting close to your seam. And I'm just gonna do that on both sides. Yep. And yeah, I'm just thinking out loud. Threaded my machine again. I'm not holding them tight enough. That's all right. I'm going to learn. It's very much a learning curve with this baby. Hold, hold, please. Hold. Okay. That's the only thing, honestly, about this machine that I do not like. I honestly cannot believe they can't decide some machine that you don't have to hold the thread up. Though. I mean, it's just, it's not, uh, I don't like it. That's the only thing, and I knew it going in. And it's, it's doable, so don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm really not complaining. I'm just making a suggestion for whoever who is going to do the next machine. Don't make it so difficult like that. Okay, so now we have our handle on the inside. It's a beautiful thing. All right, next step. All right, so I have my lining right side out. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm going to insert that inside my outside. And I'm going to put this pocket 
on the opposite side of my outside pocket. And then we're just going to clip all the way around. And I will do that on fast forward. All right, so you see me, I had to change my bottom, which is fine now that I know when I do the top stitching, it'll be good. So I've got to pull my outside through my inside hole. I'll do that on fast forward.
You guys, my camera didn't film the top stitching. I don't know, don't ask me. But Thor did beautifully. Look at that. Now I need to go and just do a little heat here to even out the vinyl. But look at that top stitching. Easy, 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 easy. I mean, it's beautiful. I did start on the side over here, so it's not nearly as noticeable. And then I did finish the um, lining turning hole. So there it is. The ethyl tote, look how big that is. It's very wide. It's, uh, I think, let me see. Let me see how wide it is. It's five inches wide on the bottom. Five inches wide on the bottom, and on the top, it's two and a half. The gusset, I'm just talking about the gusset. Huge big slip pocket here. Two slip pockets on the inside, and then a big space, and I did a shoulder strap. No hardware. The pattern doesn't call for any hardware, so I didn't use any. You could easily add purse feet. You could easily add a magnetic snap or some kind of a, um, a flap if you wanted to. That would be cute, really. But the shoulder strap is a perfect shoulder length. It's just perfect. Very cute. Free pattern from Swoon. Go give it a try. Beginner friendly, beginner friendly pattern. Doesn't take a lot of material either. Give it a try. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be sure to click like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate you guys. Bye-bye.